<laughs> hey, 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 man, what's up? It is the Ace Michael Show. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, man, you got to keep it. Keep aware. Stay awake. Stay wide awake. And that's where we're at, man. Ace Michael Show. If you ever want to be on the show, you can. All you have to do is just contact and say, hey, I want to be on the show. It's that simple. It's a simple email. It's a short mm -hmm. one. I want to be on the show. That's the way we can get you on as a guest. You can speak your mind, voice your opinions, suggestions, convictions, beliefs, ideas, prophecies. And that's what's up. Today on the show, I have a very talented performer singer-songwriter uh kiss kiss is on the show for the first time today on the ace michael show kiss, kiss, yes! kiss, kiss, kiss. i'm in here i'm in here what up ace ain't nothing to it i'm happy to have you on board uh i'm a big fan of yours and i don't say that lightly i'm not one that will tell people like if, if i don't like what they're doing i'm gonna find something else to say it's, it'll be uh, nice, okay. but i'm not gonna be like kiss their butt you know that's come on dog you thank you it. for having me thank you, you for having me. got it you I'm a, I'm a fan of you as it. well I'm, I'm so happy to be here with you right now thank you <laughs> so let's jump in right into how you got to be that way that you are because you're a great performer a wonderful singer a uh, pretty lady to boot but what what where did all this come from what's the deal what's what's happening what's really happening what's cracking what's my popping? mama and my daddy <laughs> my mom and my daddy. <laughs> were they entertainment people? And God. <laughs> were, was your mom and dad entertainment people? No, no, they were not. They were not. As a matter of fact, to be honest, I am the only person uh, thus far that is a singer that sings in my whole family, both sides, my mom and dad's side. So, oh, wow. Um, yeah, but I just, uh, I get like, um, I think I got the the audacity and the 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 heart the bravery the courage to do it from my mom okay i got that from my mom so that counts um to even try to sing you know um probably came from her and then um the way i approach my music and a whole bunch of other things and deal with people is probably my dad so but mm -hmm. of course you know and then the gift just came from god so now you are a great singer though so w what was the initial thing that started you off like how did you even were you thrown onto the stage by accident and you were like i guess i gotta sing my way out of this like how did <laughs> uh, <laughs> no um actually that's my mom's responsibility again she used to listen to uh music as she's cleaning up and she said that uh she could hear me singing and she said it sounded really good hmm. um and so she sat me on the stairs like baby do that again do it again just one more time yeah. do it again let me just you know and i would i was singing and she was like oh my god so um she uh started having me uh i was shy um uh, so she started having me sing at all of the holiday parties um where her friends and everybody they get together they'd be at the spade table drinking or whatever and she would be like oh y'all put some money on the table i'm gonna have my baby sing and uh everybody would put wow. money out on the table and i would be in the staircase um and i would sing but i didn't want anybody to see me but i would sing um and i i did this at every party every gathering until one day i wanted to be seen and it's been a wrap since then so how long is this process you're talking about? Are we talking about six years, 10 years, last year? You know, like no, 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 no. This is a, um, the entertainment part of it that I offer is sold separately from everything else. It's not something that uh, um, this is actually just a part of my personality and my upbringing. It's been since I was three singing. And then I used let's see i use my singing to be able to like fit into like cool crowds and stuff um, i'm a military kid so i had to start over millions and millions of times and make friends over and over again and the only thing i had that was like super super cool was my hair <laughs> and my voice so i kind of moved my way into that and then rumors would start and all of the teachers that were in charge of like performing arts and the entertainment and the choir and everything else would kind of recruit me and i've been singing and doing this throughout my entire life and then never really thought um let's see i started doing this 
professionally as an artist since 14. I was in Atlanta. Um, I was touring. I was opening up for some people, some big names that are still doing it right now, like Outkast. And I don't know, I'm from the South. I don't know if people are familiar with uh, 12 Gauge. He did the song Donkey Butt. Um, uh, let's see, uh, a Goody Mob. Yeah. I've opened up for a lot of people. I've done a lot of shows. So I was doing that. I started doing original music first. Um, songwriting, freestyling, you know, I, I spit. So I've been just living my whole life like this, really. And so I just now, what, four years, just started doing this cover tune situation. Uh -huh. and, and then this is how I meet you. This is how I get to meet wonderful people like you. But that's basically, you know, it, my story. I've been a um, recording artist for a very long time, though, since 14. My first stage name was Fudge. <laughs> fudge. Fudge, yes. Fudge. Yes, Fudge. Like yes. chocolate fudge? Yes, Fudge. Okay. And I actually Why? had... Why Fudge? <laughs> I was, you know what, just super, super, just extra chocolatey, you know? And um, <laughs> and did something happen where your chocolatiness went away a little bit, or what? <laughs> you still I extra feel chocolatey, it. right? <laughs> well, you know the humidity of you know I'm from Georgia, yeah. So the yeah. humidity down south, you know, it treats you, it nourishes that that it right. nourishes my skin. You know, I'm being deprived right, right now. That's probably why I'm not as chocolatey. Right. But um, so I was uh, my stage name was Fudge. And I released a CD. It was barcoded. I've been with BMI since I was 14. First studio I worked out of was James Brown's studio. Yes, I actually wow. got to meet him. Um, I don't know if you guys know anything about Tony Mercedes and all mm -hmm. of that historical like them girls stuff. with them Daisy Dukes. Yes. Okay. Like them girls yeah. with the uh, Daisy of course, Tony Mercedes. That's the only reason. That's the reason. And, and my yes. man Steve Roland. That's yeah, yes. Know those people. Yes. So, <laughs> um, I was under them uh, in the studio. Um, that's how I got to work with Twelve Gauge. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I've been. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I've been doing this for a while. For a while. Nice. So, would you say? That, I mean, you've lived your dream. I mean, you're not you're not deceased yet, or no no time soon. Thank God, <laughs> not would. But you you know you your life has been about you living your dream, right? Wouldn't you say that? Yeah, it's been about getting cl the closest. I'm still moving closest. I wanna I wanna record. I'm recording now. I'm still a recording artist. Um, I feel like I'm a better writer than I am anything else, to be honest with you. Um, and uh, I'm I'm working on it. I want to go on a another tour. Uh, grown me another tour wow. and I want to definitely get you know my thoughts and my words and my point of views out there via music so I'm still working on it I'm, I'm definitely still working on it I'm getting What's closer. your favorite part of the entire music spectrum you like to be in the studio more you like to be on the tours you like to be on stage what's your favorite if you do only one if I could pick only one? If you did, yeah. If you were just saying, you know what? If I only did this one for the rest of my life, it would be dot, dot, dot. Ooh, I'd be on tour. <laughs> so you like, tour, like doing to, my music. You yes. like to travel in the hotels and the, the buses yeah, and planes it's and all cool. that? <laughs> it, it, it's worth getting on planes. It's hold worth on, getting hold, on planes. Hold on one second, kiss, kiss. I'm sorry, one second. Look at them girls with the Daisy Dukes on. I want you to. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a moment to myself right now. <laughs> no, that's fine. No, the place I'm staying, there's, the grandkids are over and they're literally right, right outside the door. You have grandchildren? They, huh? You have grandchildren? No, no. The place I'm staying has grandchildren. I've been not. Oh, okay. I was grandchildren. about to say. No. But they, they were playing, which is fine, but they were playing right outside the door. So I'm going to have to edit because I think I can hear them. I can hear them, and we don't want to hear them on the tape. Okay. So I can hear them, too. Oh, you, yeah. Then we, probably, we probably can hear them. Okay, so I'm going to pick this up as if we never left off. 
Uh, so your favorite part of the entertainment, would you say, is doing the touring mostly? You love you love that more than the stage, more than the studio? Yeah. I mean, because the touring is everything. So the touring is the stage and the, the music and everything else and hanging out with all your favorite people and living your dream with all your favorite people. That's the yeah. best part. So I'm going to go with the tour because the tour kind of wraps everything up. Wow. And so doing this business, now I have to ask you because you are a woman, it wasn't so much fun for women a few years back. Like women were saying that the music industry was very slanted. They weren't getting the same opportunities as male producers. Even Beyonce was saying she wasn't make she wouldn't make the same money as a male counterpart doing the same thing she was doing. And that was just a couple of years ago. You know, so did you uh, ever run into situations that you felt like, you know what, they're doing this just because I'm a woman, I'm not getting a fair shake? Um, mine kind of, kind of ran a little bit deeper than that. Um, for a minute, I was running into uh, dark skin, light skin snag, where I was, oh, too, yeah. I was too dark and being dark wasn't appealing enough to the public to release my music. Um, or, uh, of course, the industry has evolved since then, but also the she's too thick, she's too fat, she's too this. Mm -hmm. I went through that um, for a long time. Um, I went through that for a long time, and then I lost the weight. I can't tell you, I can't change my skin. Right. But right. I, I, don't, I don't think I ever stopped being chocolate. I just think that I just, you know, at some point people just started uh, accepting, you know, uh, everybody, everybody. Uh, now, I have a similar uh, unique story to tell that, you know, I was pursuing the music business in LA for a long time. And I got to the point where I got, I got signed. Um, and I was listening to my demos. This is on a cassette tape, might have been on a DVD, on a CD at that point, but pretty much probably was cassette. But anyway, I was listening to my music on a bus one night. And I was listening to what was going to be the whole album, start from start to finish. I was trying to hear it like uh, someone who'd never heard it before. I wanted okay. to hear the whole album and just see what it made me feel like. I got to the end of the album, and this thought hit me. And, you know, sometimes you get a thought that once that thought is in your head, you can't erase it. You can never see the situation the same way again. Right. So I was listening to my music, and I got this thought that, nobody's ever going to hear this music. There's no place for me. Like for me, I was always doing funk music and rock and roll music. And we're talking about the early nineties when really there was only Lenny Kravitz. There was only Seal and Hootie and the Blowfish in the whole music okay. business. Okay. As a black male vocalist, you weren't going to be doing anything with rock and roll because that was pretty much taken. You know, and I'm not an R&B singer and I've never been an R&B singer. So I couldn't change my style. I could never be Luther Vandross or Bobby Brown or, you know, Usher. That wasn't who I was. Mm -hmm. So I sat there and I started crying thinking, this is a tremendous. I mean, I've dumped all this money into this music. I've done all these shows. I've established myself on so many levels. But the main thing that's going to stop me is going to be because I'm black there never will be a space on the radio for black male artists like me. Now, I've since stopped trying to produce and put out a record of my own music just because I've gotten older, but I still feel the same way. I don't think that there is a place in rock music. I mean, Bruno Mars is an amazing crossover artist, but he's still a R&B soul dance artist. I don't know that there ever will be a spot for a rock artist or a, a true pop artist to come along when you're black. I think, I think people have an expectation that you're supposed to be danceable, soul, R&B. Well, you're black. Why don't you do black songs? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think that now more than ever, you could do that. Now more than ever, you can accomplish exactly what it is you want it to. Um, because right now, if your music is really good, it streams. I listen to so much music without seeing a face, without seeing mm. a dance move, without seeing anything. And if I like it, I like it. You know, and if the person's music is really, really good on a 
consistent basis of like, yo, I think I really just like this person's music. Mm -hmm. Then I'll get on social media and try to find them and see what they're doing, where they at, what they look like, you know. Mm -hmm. But once, you know, I believe that music now is um, a relationship where it is love first. It ain't the lust part of it no more. Like it's music and, and you know, just uh, if it was a relationship, it isn't what we see, what we see make us like. No, it's really what we hear, the heart, the everything, just how it feels, the music first. And then it's like, I already love you. So if I'm listening to you and I don't know what you look like or anything, age, nothing, and I'm listening to your music, mm. your vibrations that hit my soul don't lie, baby. So what's gonna happen is, I'm gonna fall in love with you and your music, and then I'm gonna see you and I'm gonna be like, oh, okay. So this is him. I like him. And that's that. And I think that no matter what, no matter your size, your color, your gender, any of that stuff, you know, the only thing that makes a difference is your hope, you know, your hope and your drive. And I feel like it's not too late. And I feel like right now is the perfect time to do your thing, you know, and, yeah. and have your lane. Look, have your lane, have your lane, have your way. Do you think? Mm, interesting. Yeah. You know, um, so we've been going through this uh, racial demonstrations, Black Lives Matter, and I was speaking with my mother, and she said an interesting thing. You know, my mom, uh, well, my mom had me when she was 18. So she literally was coming home from school and watching Martin Luther King on TV. You Don't. know, and like her, her generation is the, the civil rights movement generation. And she was saying she's never seen so much unrest in her whole life. And I thought, well, how can you say that? Because you guys went through, I mean, you, were, you guys were Malcolm X. You were, you know, Martin Luther King. She said, no, but it's never been like this. And uh, she said, and she's never seen so many white people coming out to support a black cause in her whole life. And you got to remember, she grew up during the most turbulent time of civil rights, right? But I thought about what she said, and I thought, you know, I think the thing that brought everybody together the most is actually music. I mean, I really do. I think it's the fact that if you grew up from 1975 on, you've heard a lot of black music. You've heard a lot of hip hop music and you've seen a lot of black stars. And it's really hard for you to go, I am prejudiced against them, but those are my favorite. Some of them are my favorite artists. Like, what yeah. do you mean? Like, these are my favorite people. What are yeah. you talking about? Yeah. You know, and I think that's an interesting thing. What are your thoughts on that? I, I you said it. You just said it. I, you know, yeah. um, before, um, you know, during the civil rights movement, um, jumping off, you know, the way it was, um, I always say with Martin Luther the King. I never say Martin Luther King. I say Martin Luther the King, okay? Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, around that time, um, people, you know, rock and roll was being taken from us. Like, our music and stuff was being taken from us. And now we are allowed to be the faces of our music. And people are allowed to figure out what they're affiliating themselves with. And we, as um, a culture, we as Black people, we have been working, 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 um and finding ways to be accepted you know and i would just say coming around now throughout the century uh the decade even you know the decade or the century um we have um had some of the best music you know and it's undeniable and we are the face of our own music we are the face of our own thoughts we are the faces of our own expressions mm -hmm. and the rest of the world is like oh, we want this we love this you know yeah. And so with that being said, it's the affiliation. And I do feel like music has brought us all together to the point to where the whole world is like, wait a minute, <laughs> you right. know, right. this is, this is, you know, this is it right here. You know, yeah. we are, we are still, you know, what we are still, what the world sits upon, you know what I'm saying? As far as everything you know everything that we have been accepted to do sports music it's a lot of things still that you know a lot of us aren't really being fully fully um accepted um mm. into certain fields but you know they say oh let them have basketball and football and sports and athletics and you know and music and all that stuff because we love that stuff you know 
but it's deeper than that. I feel like the whole world actually love us, you know, love us and relate to us more by listening to our music, you know, because mm -hmm. we are the faces of it. So, you know, I do feel like the movement has been just people standing up because they really relate to us and, and understand we're not any different from each other, honestly. You know, we just say no, things course. different, you know, but, you know, you know what I'm saying? We got a little swag, you know, in our, in our deliverance, but, you know, I just think that definitely music, I agree with you totally. Music has definitely been a whole bridge, um, a whole bridge to the unity as far as this, time these times are right now maybe, you know. maybe it's even the arts and entertainment culture that, i mean the contribution that black arts adds to the world is really undeniable like there there's no you know i had it i had two interesting experiences in life one uh time i was walking in culver city and they've got a six theater movie theater there okay hold on what's what's culver city Culver City is uh, in if in um, Los Angeles area, south of Hollywood. Before okay. you get to the beach, it's Culver City, small okay. little town, but it's it was uh, is my where I lived. And so, uh, okay. so I'm walking past a movie theater where they've got six theaters. Okay, so only six movies in the whole theater. And on this one day, I noticed that this was around the time that. Um, What's Love Got to Do With It came out. So Angela, ba Angela Bassett. So that was one theater. There was an Eddie Murphy theater. There was a Bill Cosby movie. There was another film with uh, Lawrence Fishburne and then and a sixth film. So that was the first time in my life, in my entire life, that I'd ever walked past a theater and every movie on the marquee had a black lead actor. And Dope. so I noted that. I was like, wow, things have really changed because we didn't used to have that when I was a kid. Yeah. Now today, I had another such experience. I was watching CNN and there was the trial or the hearing for the officer that shot the gentleman uh, recently in Atlanta, okay? And they threw the book at him, they gave him 11 counts. But what blew my mind was that every person, the judge, the district attorney, the lawyers, were all black people. And I'd never seen that before until today so it's interesting the strides that we've made um and and i just want to ask you as a black person i mean why do you feel we have to make strides like you know what i'm saying like why do we have to have these milestones like oh finally finally a black quarterback <laughs> you know what i'm saying like why why, why what's your thought on that um my thought about that is kind of i feel like it's more our, it's more our fault um, because, you know, in, in black homes, you know, a lot of children, our children um, are being pushed to do what everybody wants to do, you know, music and sports and, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I feel like as long as we, we have to raise you know, these attorneys, we have to raise um, doctors, we have to raise, you know, we have to, we have to, to, to raise our children, you know, by the thousands, you know, mm -hmm. by the millions to want to do this. So if no matter if the world tries to stop everybody, at least a hundred will get it. You mm. know, I feel like it's, that's more so us, us not thinking, hey, you know what, let's protect our community, you know, let, let me go uh, to school for this so that, you know, when the justice system starts to fail us, I can help, I can do something, I can be there. And, you know, and, and let me get all my friends to, to want to be a part of this so that we can make a difference eventually, you know. It's just about where we, what we raise, where we, we target them, you know. It, that's basically what it is, it's just us, you know, we should want, we should be raising more, you know, doctors and, and lawyers and judges and governors, and we should be raising, you Scientists know. Scientists and, and. Yeah, uh, this, this is what we yeah. should be doing is, you know, it's the music and all of that stuff is so simple. They let us into that and sports and all of the other stuff, but we really need to raise, you know, the people that's gonna, you know, 
help us when the system starts to fail us. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it should be more of us, you know, and, and, it, you know, in Atlanta, I've lived in Atlanta and Atlanta is moving. It is moving. Um, the heart of the city is beating hard and fast. It is just a whole energy in the A um, where people are, you know, you're the saying, keeping up with the Joneses. They keep up with the Joneses in every way, okay? Oh, he going to college? I'm going to college. He doing this? Okay, I'm about <laughs> to do this. Like, this is, that is basically like, yeah. It's definitely, a, um, doesn't surprise me at all. That's, that's A-Town stay down all day. So, you know, and it could be like that everywhere. It's just, we're not really, we're not really thinking about making a difference until it's kind of too late, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? We would have to protest less if we made sure that, you know, we were, you know, police, if we were <laughs> judges, if we, you know what I'm saying? When we have the yeah, word yeah, yeah. about this stuff. You have some brilliant insights. I love the way your, your mind works. Uh, and I love you as an artist too, but I love the way you think. So did you go to college? Did you, are you, where did you get so smart? I guess is what I want to ask. Um, you know what? I'm one of those kids that my parents and everybody was so intrigued by me being able to sing that college was not an option. I didn't know that there was anything else I could possibly be good at. And it irritates my soul sometimes. Um, because as I get older, I find that I have the patience and the knack for so much stuff, you know, forensic science and engineering and you know, I I got a lot of talent, um, but you know, so far I've been just training and conditioning my music, and just working on that. It's like yo, so I you know, just common sense, and you know, um, I'm very in tune, very passionate about you know just life, and you know, I I pay attention. You know, I just pay attention, and I I listen to others. You know, I have these type of conversations on the regular with my folks. You know, so. Um, this, this, this is a lot of stuff, you know, that, um, I'm talking to you about these, these are conversations that I have on the regular with the cool kids, right, <laughs> my friends right. that are my friends that actually have some food for thought and, you know, soul food. We have these conversations, you know, everything is not just music. It's, you know, it's just a lot of things. Um, I'm, I'm way, way deeper than, you know what people see but yeah I didn't get the opportunity to go to college I don't think my first I had never seen a frat house until I don't know five years ago I was like whoa oh, wow. yeah like my parents my dad was military and military was always an option but I wasn't rocking with that um and music was thrown out there I, I didn't get the opportunity to I don't think I ever took an ACT or an SAT ever in my life ACE you know, so I didn't have this opportunity. Um, but if, if I had, you know, children, I would be on, I would be on the stuff I'm talking to you about, you know, I wouldn't be trying to force my kids to, but I definitely would be like, Hey, you like this? You want to try that? How about this? You know, yeah, yeah. you know, try to sharpen, see where, where you sharpest at, you know, and let's move with that and brush that up. That's, you know, my parents, they was like, Oh, she good at music. That's it. Right. That's it. Don't don't say nothing. Don't do nothing else. Just and the world it. was a different place then, and that that was probably more of an option. I remember my mother sat me down one day and she said, "Look, you basically got two choices: you learn a craft or you go to the military. That's life for a black man. You know I mean, I don't know. You're not going to get a scholarship to play football, so you need to learn a craft or join the military. And those are your two options. And now I can't imagine." a black mother saying that to her son because those aren't the only two options now. But when I was 16, yeah, those, that was pretty much it. And if you didn't, you were really jumping out on an edge. Who knew what you might be if you weren't doing one of those two things for sure. Cause you know, your future wasn't set. So um, before we run out of time, cause on this show, we always run out of time. Just when it starts to get good. Uh, how do we find you on social media? If we want to follow you, we want to stalk you. We want to become fans. We want to stay fans. Okay, so I like to be stalked. <laughs> you can find me um, on Instagram 
xo.kyss979. You can always find me on Facebook, um, YouTube. You can find me anywhere. Just type in Kiss Kiss, K-Y-S-S, K-Y-S-S. Um, I am thinking about changing my name to KK Mala, though. I'll, I'll keep you posted on that one. But for right now, yes, please do. you can find me, K-Y-S-S, K-Y-S-S, um, and AC. You're amazing you're amazing you're amazing you're amazing i've been wanting to tell you this so you actually look like you could be a family member of mine i probably am yeah do you have any um davises in your family any davises well this is, this would be the first public time i've told the story um but i actually never met my father in person okay so my actual father uh for years i didn't even know his name so I know his name now, his last name is Cruz, and okay. my family is from the Atlanta area. So, but I've never met that side of my family because I never met my father or his okay. side of the family. It's very possible that we are related. It's very Is possible. your father, is he still living? No, unfortunately, you know, he's passed already. So oh. when I say I never got to meet my, I mean, I literally, I didn't even know until last summer that I have a sister. I have an older sister. You have an older sister? Uh, Where's yeah, she at? Never, Is she still? She? I don't know. She's still alive, but she's much older than me. She's at least 15 years older than me. So, oh, that's you know, dope. <laughs> that's so dope, dope. You know, that's just how it worked out. So, yeah, it's very possible that we are related. There was a, uh, I have some Allens on my stepfather's side. And there was a gentleman in L.A. that was always doing the open mics and showcases. Mm -hmm. and Patrick Allen. And I don't know why I just always felt something whenever I ran into him. And I, and I just stopped him one night. And I said, hey, do you, do you have any relatives from Kansas City, Independence? He's like, yeah, that's where I'm from. And I was like, dude, I think you're my cousin, bro. Like, <laughs> you know, that's and you owe me $5. Anyway. <laughs> hey, man, Ace Michael's show, my guest today is Kiss Kiss, okay? Know that, people. And uh, when's the next show? Do you have a show lined up coming up? Uh, we are going to get back into the swing of things in July. Um, okay. I am with Ken Folk, the Ken Folk Band, at okay. the Blue Martini every Sunday, and I think they're getting ready to get it back hopping. Is that that so, a is that a different band than Royale? Yes, it is. It is. Oh, it's a different band. Okay, mm -hmm. well, right. singers can have more than one band. That's what's up. Uh, no, okay, see, this, so this isn't my this see this is the thing. This isn't my band. I've been hired. Um, this is like one of the it's one of the best bands in the city. It's a it's a few, but this is one of them. I would um, expect and, nothing less from you. Yeah, yeah so you're good, and you belong in a really great band. Um, okay, so if you guys get a chance, by the time this show comes out, it'll probably be show time but if you get a chance see kiss kiss live she's really really great she's she's really really great so oh, check her out. <laughs> and that's what's up hey man it's been the ace michael show you know what i say at the end of every show i still mean it live the life you love love the life you live thank you bye thank you